Greetings, fellow mathematicians. We're going to take a look at four sequences and how to find their limits. Now, before we take a look at these four examples, we're going to review two things that will probably make these a lot easier. The first result is a very simple type of sequence or term where you basically have a number, r, maybe a real number, raised to the power n. And keep in mind here, n is your index for the sequence, which is going to approach infinity. Now, there's a few possibilities here depending on the value of r. And depending on the value of r, we get three different possibilities here. I like to point this out first with some examples. If r is less than 1, like r equals a half, think of what happens as you take powers of a half. It keeps getting smaller and smaller, eventually approaching 0. If r equals 1, 1 to any power is 1. So r to the n in the case of r equals 1 just approaches 1. And if r is bigger than 1, like 2 to the n, powers of 2 keep growing, and r to the n would approach infinity. Now there is a fourth different possibility. If r is negative 1, think of what happens to negative 1 raised to powers. Negative 1 to an even power is positive 1. Negative 1 to an odd power is negative 1. This term, negative 1 to the n, it's going to keep bouncing back and forth between negative 1 and positive 1 forever. The terms will never approach a single finite number. So for this term, the limit does not exist as a sequence, since it approaches two different numbers, 1 and negative 1. All right, so we're going to use this result in a lot of these examples. The other thing which we'll need for one of these problems is the squeeze theorem. And to review this very quickly, we have the term for our sequence, a sub n, squeezed between two other sequence terms. If the squeezing terms, the smaller and bigger terms, have the same limit, l, as n goes to infinity, then the term in the middle, a sub n, has the same limit, l, as n approaches infinity. All right, so we'll get to that at some point, but let's take a look at our first one. a sub n, the term for our sequence, is defined as 1 plus a half to the n, and that's basically our first result. The value of r here is 1 half. As n increases, this term is going to approach 0. So since this term approaches 0, it looks like the whole thing is going to approach 1. So in this case, for this example, we might write that this limit comes out to 1. The limit exists, the terms approach a single number, and they all approach 1 in the limit as n approaches infinity. All right, if we take a look at the second one, well, you can probably see the pattern here. This was r equals a half less than 1. Now we have r as 3 halves. That is bigger than 1. This term is going to get bigger towards infinity. That's your last possibility here. r is bigger than 1. The limit approaches infinity. So we can say the whole limit here approaches infinity. All right, that takes care of the first two. Let's go to the third, where our term a sub n in the sequence is given as 1 plus negative 1 to the nth power. Now, this is close to this, but we added 1 to that. So let's just write out what some of these terms look like for that sequence. So start with n equals 1. This is negative 1 to the first power negative 1 plus 1 will get 0. Now go to n equals 2, negative 1 squared, positive 1 plus 1 will get 2. And you can probably see the pattern here. This is going to alternate back and forth between 0 and 2 forever. Just like this term, negative 1 to the n, that sequence, has a limit that does not exist because the terms do not approach a single number. Here it's very similar, 
but your terms approach or just are two different values, zero or two, so this limit does not exist. So we would write here the limit as n approaches infinity of that term a sub n, that limit does not exist. All right, now we're ready for the fourth example. The numerator is the same term over here from example three, but notice now we're dividing by n, and that's gonna make a huge difference. So let's take a look at some of these terms. We basically have the numerators here. All right, so let's start with n equals one. Our numerator is gonna be zero divided by one, so that will just be zero. All right, now we go to n equals two. Our numerator is going to be two, but we're dividing by two, which is one. All right, the next term, when n equals three, that's gonna come out to zero because your numerator is zero. But now when you go to n equals four, notice you're going to get in the numerator two divided by four, And you can probably see what's going to happen here. The next term after that would be zero. And let's write one more. The numerator goes back to two, but now this is the case, and I have to count here, this is n equals one, two, three, four, five, six. Now we'll get two over six. And it looks like here that the numerator for the non-zero terms is going to be two, but your denominator keeps getting bigger. So this seems like it's going to approach zero in the limit as n goes to infinity, but how do we make that precise? Just writing out a few terms is not proper justification or work. How we make this precise to get you full credit in your Calc 2 course is using the squeeze theorem. So let's build up the inequality here. We want to build up from a sub n. We want to find a term that's bigger and one that's smaller. So let's start with the observation that the numerator 1 plus negative 1 to the n is either 0 or 2. So what we can say here to start is that the numerator, one plus negative one to the n, it's between zero and two. Now, to make the middle here look like our term, I'm gonna to wanna to divide everything by n. So divide zero by n, you'll just get zero. Divide the middle by n. That gives us our term for the sequence, a sub n, and now divide two by n, And what we want to check with the squeeze theorem is what happens to the ends, the bigger and smaller terms. Well, the smaller one just approaches zero. That's just zero. We have a constant sequence. And we have two to the n. Well, we have an n in the denominator. Your denominator is going to get really big. Eventually, that fraction becomes small. This also approaches zero. So what we have here is our term a sub n squeezed between two other sequences, both of which have the same limit as n approaches infinity. And what we can conclude from the squeeze theorem is the sequence or term in the middle approaches the same limit in this case, zero. So basically from here, we would write that the limit as n approaches infinity of one plus negative one to the n over n, that equals zero by applying the squeeze theorem. All right, make sure you're on top of these two results. They're gonna pop up enough through this part of your Calc 2 course with sequences that you'll wanna be comfortable and familiar with them. Hope you enjoyed the video. 
Hope you're learning a lot. If you are, support the channel, like, and subscribe.